Hi, I'm Rocket. Welcome to my shop. Uh, you probably have a lot of questions and I'm sure I will answer them eventually. But right now we're gonna talk about this. This is duct tape. I am a little bit obsessed with duct tape and uh, I have made just a few things out of duct tape like this, 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 and more. I am a huge Star Wars nerd and always have been. And so today we're going to talk about my newest project, which is making a replica and or model of Slave One, Boba Fett's ship from Star Wars. This is a duct tape rope. A single piece of duct tape that's about a foot long and rolled inside out. This is pretty much what I make absolutely everything out of. You can see that it's sticky on the outside. We'll talk about grades of duct tape in a different video, but this is the one that we're going to use right now. This is 3M's DT8, the lower quality of their DT line. And I'm going to show you how I make a rope out of it. Take a piece of duct tape a little bit longer than a foot, maybe about a foot. Stick it to the table. This is the tricky part here. The table needs to not stick too much, but it also needs to stick well enough that it doesn't just come flying right off and doesn't pull residue off with it. Start by using your fingers to kind of feather the very corners of the piece of tape that is stuck to your table. Then using pressure on your fingers, not your palm, you're going to roll it back and forth away from you and towards you down the top edge of the tape. This will definitely take some practice and if you have oily hands you'll find that it doesn't work very well. This has taken me many years to perfect and it still tears the skin off my hands sometimes. Different grades of duct tape and different brands of duct tape are going to behave differently. There are different thicknesses and different adhesives but you can see that it is very strong once it's rolled into a rope. Over time, you'll develop calluses and occasionally tear some skin off your fingers, maybe creating some blisters as well. It really just takes practice and perseverance. So first things first, I take reference pictures and print off front, back, side, top, all the different section views that I'm looking for. And then I make large, thick duct tape ropes and sort of frame it out. You can see here I'm almost doing a sort of system that you might find in a boat, uh, like boat ribs. And this is how I like to frame out all of the initial system. The underside of this is not going to have any of the detailing in it until later on. So I basically build a frame to hold the outer dome shape. So I've moved my workshop at the Artisan's Asylum and I'm continuing to work on this framing here. You can see in the background I'm watching Star Wars. I always like to sort of get into the mood by watching something that's within the universe and building the thing from. So further structural reinforcement to maintain the shape that I'm looking for and I actually kind of eyeball the different heights as we go. So I start to build up the sides with individual duct tape ropes, one strand thick, and then just kind of go at it until I get the dome shape that I'm looking for. And as I go, I constantly have to sort of adjust and add support to maintain the shape that I want. So yeah, this can seem like a pretty tedious process, but once I get into the zone, it's really not bad. I try to make sure that each layer is stuck to itself just strong enough so that it doesn't peel off later on. And you'll see that roll of blue duct tape in the background is actually double-sided duct tape. So I flip it over and add additional supports and add the double-sided duct tape to sort of make sure that all of the layers stick together. Here I add some more. I have to keep testing whether or not it's going to stay. 
Right here, I'm actually working on the two wing cowls. I actually built it as one part as a dome so that they were symmetrical. Now, further on, you'll see me actually scrap that idea and cut them off and basically rebuild them completely. But this was my first attempt. Then I come to the part that I always hate, which is cutting into the part that I already spent a lot of time making pretty but it's a necessary part of the process. So I'm cutting away the sides, sort of making it fit here, and cutting away the supports to kind of line up with that. This is an iterative process. Right here you can see me installing the, the wing cowls, and then I cut out the shape on the sides. But shortly after I decide that I don't really like it very much, and I don't like how the shape is holding. So I start that shape over again. You see the ropes are going horizontally here, but the ones I'm building, they're actually going to be vertically. So I build two new wing cowls and have to cut out a bunch of my old supports and install new ones. This is the point where I actually start to do a second layer around the front as well as the back. And that is to basically reinforce this entire thing to be stronger. You can see me adding different ropes to different portions along the front to change that contour and along the back to strengthen that whole shape. Now I'm actually starting to work on the back uh, angled section of the ship. So I design that brace there and some temporary bracing. And then I design the top spine of the ship. The spines that I design are always thick and beefy. And I learned this when I designed Serenity. This is about three or four duct tape ropes. Each duct tape rope is a thickness of four strips of duct tape. So it's very strong and when it goes together they stick together and stay together. I can score along the top edge to kind of keep it in shape. You can see I added a flat section in between the two wing cowls here. It was sort of haphazard and you'll see that it didn't quite work out how I wanted it to pretty soon. I do the secondary contour along the front portion here, and it takes me a couple tries to get right, but this is pretty good, and I like how it looks. I think that I'm going to be put it away for a little while while I work on some other projects, so I work on some strengthening members and some additional bracing basically with the double-sided duct tape and additional duct tape ropes. It's at this point that I realized that some of the underside bracing is less than adequate. So I use some foam to hold it upside down to work on that. And then I keep bracing and keep modifying this to kind of be how I want it to be. The shape looks really good to me in this instant and I am happy with how it's looking. So I pick it up and put it aside while I work on some other projects. So one year and some regret later, you can see that this is not in great shape. It's drooping, parts are falling off, the tape is starting to discolor and or is already discolored, and a lot of the structure and support material that I created is not really holding up very well. I also am a little bit of an income poop and took pictures in vertical. Yes, I know. I won't do it again. I promise. You can see here how the front structure doesn't really look how I want it to, and so I start to tear it out. Next, I go through and I reinforce the wing cowls and then build a new front. You'll see me tear a whole bunch of this out and then keep going. It was a painful process, but it was due to my negligence and my 
disregard for my own art that caused this to happen. I'll admit this part was quite cathartic, ripping out the interior, which I thought always looked a little bit sloppy, but it didn't when I first made it. It looked great when I first made it. Time is killer of everything. Here you can see me using the double-sided duct tape that I used to seal everything together, and then some double, triple, quadruple ropes to strengthen this whole thing. So it's at this point that I basically need to redo all of that structure that I had previously, now that I've adjusted the shape of the front and the top to go back to where I wanted it to be. This is a tedious process, but I actually make it a little less robust this time around because I'm hoping on kind of taking care of it before it has time to droop. So it's at about this point that I got super frustrated with having to take a whole bunch of stuff apart and I wanted to work on a new thing. So I start to work on the wings. You can see that I'm kind of lining up the shapes with the reference here and creating the two posts that are going to be the main struts for the wings. Here's some detailed footage of me making the main struts for the wings and you can see that it's actually a single double or triple rope then surrounded by a number of additional single ropes and that makes a very strong very stiff rod and it's very useful for structural support. I use a lot of double-sided duct tape here to make it strong and consistent. One of my favorite parts is actually coming up where I make the outer layer. So I do a lot of different layers. So that's one layer, two layer, three layer, four layer. And you can say that I actually do them in different directions so that it is strong and I can peel it off the table without it bubbling. This is how I get a nice clean finish on parts. Then it just comes to detailing and some footage that I am apparently missing. One thing I promise to get better at is making sure that I have footage of all the things I'm doing. And So this is where I'm at with the wings. You can see here that they are covered and very smooth. And I've added some detail with the layered tape here. I'm not quite done with this detail here and I'm planning on adding some piston detailing on both wings but that is coming the next session I do. Eventually these will be going in here and are actually going to have a mechanism that makes them move. So I'm planning on having these rotate and if all goes according to plan, which it usually doesn't, this is going to actually actuate the seat rotating because in the actual ship it rotates. I'm always a little bit ambitious with my mechanisms and they kind of change as we go, but no matter what I do, the wings are definitely going to rotate. So stay tuned for that. And that is my current progress. Thanks again for watching. That's my progress. That's my progress so far. There will be a lot more to go. I'm guessing somewhere in the 100 hour or more range. So this is probably going to be a three or four part video series. Stay tuned for more content on duct tape and on 3D printing, props, cosplay, EVA foam, all sorts of stuff. I'm really looking forward to sharing some of the stuff I've learned over the last few years with you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, flying by the seat of your pants is still flying. See ya.